Well folks, it's August, it's super hot outside, so that can mean only one thing. Yes, it's time for Halloween at Walt Disney World and of course the return of Mickey's not so scary Halloween party to the Magic Kingdom. So if you're planning a trip to this spooky after hours event in 2024 then stay tuned because this video is going to have you covered with all the information you're going to need to make sure that you have a spooktacular time at Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. Yeah that's right I'm starting with the puns earlier you've been warned it's not going to get any better from here. Hi I'm Andrew from Florida Tips for Brits and over the last 30 years I've visited Walt Disney World in Florida hundreds of times. So this experience has allowed me to help thousands of people people just like you plan their vacations by providing hints, tips and helpful information like the ones you're going to find in this video. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching, now let's get into it. So what exactly is Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party? Well, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is a separately ticketed event, in other words, you will need to pay additionally if you want to do the party it isn't included with normal theme park admission and it runs on select evenings 38 of them to be precise from august the 9th 2024 all the way up to halloween which is of course october 31st now prices for these tickets do vary they start at 119 dollars per person for adults and 109 dollars per person for children and go all the way up to 199 dollars and 189 dollars respectively a good rule of thumb for the pricing is that the prices tend to go up the closer to halloween that you get so the earlier parties tend to be a bit cheaper they also tend to sell out first of course Halloween I think at the time of making this video has already sold out and the opening night is already sold out so if you want to go to uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party maybe check out what dates are available see if any of those fit your schedule and maybe think about buying your tickets now that leads us on nicely to well where do you get your tickets from if you want them you can buy them direct from Disney through the uh, My Disney Experience app or of course from ticket windows at the theme parks themselves or if you're not hit uh, in Orlando already maybe you're still in the UK for example which is where I am now you can buy tickets from reputable uh, ticket providers people like uh, Florida Ticks attraction tickets people like that tend to sell the not so scary Halloween party tickets and they're available right now not sponsored by the way but I've used those companies before and I found them to be uh, pretty good so if you're thinking that sounds kind of expensive you might be wondering well can you get it any cheaper? There are some discounts available. So if you're a Disney annual pass holder, you get a $10 discount per person. Or if you're a Disney DVC member, they can also get a $10 discount per person. Other than that, unless the ticket provider, such as a Florida Ticks or an attraction tickets, happens to be running a particular um, promotion, then no, that tends to be the price that you'll pay. Honestly, these uh, parties do sell out every single year last year they sold out every single date so discounts can be a little bit hard to come by you're probably just gonna have to bite the bullet and pay the 119 to 199 per person or of course a bit cheaper for the kiddos so now you've ponied up for some tickets you're probably wondering well how does it all work when can i go to the party when can i get in when does the halloween party all start these are all great questions basically the party starts officially at 7 p.m that being said people with Halloween party tickets can get access to the Magic Kingdom as early as 4 p.m. What I mean by that is you do not actually have to have a regular day admission to Magic Kingdom to be able to go to the Magic Kingdom as early as 4 p.m. providing that you've got a ticket to the Halloween party. So the way this works is as you're entering the Magic Kingdom, let's say, at, let's say you go at 5 p.m., there'll be people actually on the gates um, and there'll be the, the, the it varies they've usually got lanyards on and stuff but they'll be handing out special wristbands that you have to wear that kind of denote that you're actually going to the halloween party you'll be asked to show these later on when they're actually asking the day guests to leave to access certain parts of the park now if you're actually already in magic kingdom let's say you went to magic kingdom and you thought you're going to do all day including the halloween party there'll be select locations around the park where you can go and actually pick up your wristbands these vary from year to year so it might just be worth checking on the my disney experience app to find out where the nearest one to you is but basically you don't have to go all the way back to the front of the park to get the wristbands this has been the case in the past but i believe this year they're going to set it up so that you can go to different locations and pick your wristbands up now for people who aren't wanting to take part in the halloween festivities but if you happen to be at magic kingdom please bear in mind that the park is going to close at 6 p.m on party days so there's not going to be things like fireworks and stuff like that just something to bear in mind around this time of the year uh, if you're not attending the halloween party that being said I like going to Magic Kingdom on party days even if I'm not attending a party because I do tend to find that the rides are much quieter, the queue lines, 
tend to be much, much shorter. Uh, we went last September and every time there was a Halloween party on, the, the, the Magic Kingdom was much, much quieter. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Next up, let's see what you're actually going to get for your money when attending one of these Halloween parties, starting with the special entertainment that's on offer. So without a doubt, when it comes to the special entertainment on offer, the main draw is going to be the Boots You Parade. Now this parade steps off twice per party, once at 8.15 and again at 11.15, weather permitting of course, and is absolutely fantastic. It's got catchy tunes, amazing floats, you'll see all your favourite villains in there as well. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge parade fan, but enjoy the boot the boot to you parade. The party parades are exceptionally good. The ones from the boot to you to the uh, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party, both excellent and well worth doing. Quick tip here, if you want a better view, try and hang on for the 11.15 parade. Um, a lot of people tend to have left the park by then because perhaps they've got younger children and things like that. So you tend to be able to get a much better view of the of the floats get, maybe get a little bit closer to the front and stuff like that just a little tip i understand that everybody can do it i've been with young kids before it, more often than not they're asleep by the 11 15 parade you know especially if you've got them in a push chair or something like that but if you can just worth bearing in mind now continuing on with entertainment now another fan favorite found at the castle stage we've got the hocus pocus villain spectacular. In the Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular, the Sanderson sisters, from Hocus Pocus of course, return to the mortal world for one night during Halloween and decide to use their magic to throw the best, most evil Halloween party ever. The show features Disney favourite villains like Maleficent, Dr. Facilier, Oogie Boogie and loads of others and is guaranteed to be a great time. Now the Hocus Pocus Spectacular is shown several times per party and it depends when you go actually, but August 9th through September 28th, the Spectacular will be at 9.05pm, 10.40pm and 12am, i.e. midnight. 29th September through October 31st, they do add an additional earlier show, so it's going to be at 7.40pm, 9.05pm, 10.40pm and 12am. Alright, so let's talk fireworks now. So Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party has an exclusive fireworks show named Mickey's Not So Spooky Spectacular, which is hosted by none other than the Pumpkin King himself, Jack Skellington, which, I'll be honest, the puppet just looks... It's amazing. The way that he just moves around the stage, it just looks like Jack Skellington's come to life and it's honestly brilliant. All this, of course, is before the fireworks actually start, but when they do, you're going to get to see Mickey, Minnie, Donald and Goofy projected on the castle as they tell a story of a visit to a haunted house. Plus, you'll see dancing skeletons, silly symphonies and even some other Disney villains making an appearance. All this is set to an amazing soundtrack and, of course, some world-class fireworks. The fireworks show happens once per party at 10pm and, in my opinion, is not to be missed. Now, those are probably the main entertainment things that are going to catch your eye when you're at the Halloween party, but that's not to say that they're the only things going on. There are tons of other things happening all around the park, such as the Cadaverdan's Barber's Shop Quartet, which is found in Frontierland on the balcony by the Country Bear Jamboree. They're at 7pm, 7.45pm, 8.30pm, 9.45pm and 10.30pm. They're a lot of fun. They usually uh, start throwing out some cheesy jokes and stuff. It's it's good. It's worth a watch if you're passing by. The next up, we've got the Disney Junior Jam Dance Party. Try saying that three times fast. That's found at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe and is running continuously throughout the party from 7 p.m. till midnight. Keeping on the dance party theme now, we've got the Descend Dance Party, which is going to be at Rocket Tower Plaza in Tomorrowland. And again, this party runs all evening, starts at 7 p.m., doesn't finish till midnight. Next up, if you head over to Adventureland, you'll get to see the Rusty Cutlass Spirited Pirate Band. These are basically what they sound like. They're a band of pirates who are also a band um, and they kind of sing sea, sea shanties and things they start about quarter past seven and they usually wrap up just before the end of the party at 11 50 p.m that just about covers it for all the major entertainment that's going to be happening at the halloween party just keep your eyes open for other little bits and pieces that might just crop up on the night or closer to the time and the occasional roaming character that might be out and about jack sparrow or, you know you never know people just pop up from time to time but those are the major kind of timed uh, entertainment things. Now, next up, I want to move on and talk a little bit about meet and greets. Now, Halloween parties can be a great way to meet some of those lesser seen characters, such as Jack and Sally, the Seven Dwarfs, and Winnie the Pooh and friends. You'll also get to meet people like rock and roll Elvis Stitch, who doesn't make an appearance very often and stuff like that. But what I will say is that these um, meet and greets can be incredibly, incredibly popular. So, if it's something that you definitely want to do, you and your family want to do to get that fun pick or whatever, then just bear in mind that you, you're going to have to 
potentially standing lines that can be quite long for these. So in the past, I've said to people go early um, to try and avoid the lines to meet people like Jack and Sally. It really is a case of just kind of wait and see when you get there because your mileage may vary. I've seen it where at the, at the beginning of the night, the line's the longest ever. Um, by the end of the night, the line's quite short and I've seen it the other way around. So I guess ultimately every party is a little bit different. So if you're wanting to do character meets and greets, there's lots of them and they're a lot of fun, but just be prepared. Sometimes you will have to wait in line for them for honestly quite a while. Right, how have we even got this far into the video without talking about the fact that you can actually go trick-or-treating at Disney World? And the great news is there's unlimited free candy. Yes, that's right. They've got themselves a sponsor in Mars Wrigley who provides all the candy. So expect to get things like Mars bars, Skittles, Lifesavers, other things and a lot of it. Uh, last time I went to one of these parties, my bag was absolutely overflowing by the time I left and I was honestly amateur hour compared to some people who were there who literally had pillowcases and they were just full of sweets. So trick or treating is a lot of fun. You'll find treat trails all around the park. They're usually marked by like a large inflatable orange uh, not so scary Halloween party marker so they're pretty hard to miss but they're also marked on the park map and of course on the My Disney Experience app as well for the Halloween party. So should have no trouble finding them. My particular favourite, I like the one that they have. If I don't know if they're gonna have it this year. They usually have one at the Philharmagic um, in Fantasyland because it's a double dip. You go in and you get a treat and then you go through the treat trail and as you're going out, there's somebody else there giving you treats. So that's a little, little tip for you there. That's a two for one, that one. So if you get to go in that one, try and go in that one because you get double, uh, double bubble on that one. It's a lot of fun. I love the trick or treating. All right, moving on to rides now. Um, first of all, a lot of the rides are actually going to be open at the Halloween party. Okay. Not all of them are going to have a Halloween t twist. In fact, only four have a Halloween twist. Um, they are going to be the Haunted Mansion, doesn't really have a Halloween twist, but it has like a bit of a show going on outside it sometimes. Um, Space Mountain, which you can ride in complete darkness. Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, which has a special Halloween overlay. And the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, or the Teacups Ride, as uh, it's officially known in our house, uh, which has like special lights and music. Lots of the other rides are open as well, however, including this year, they have announced that Tiana's Bio Adventure will be open during the Halloween party, which I know a lot of people will be quite happy about. And also Tron Light Cycle Run is open during the Halloween party. So those are the two, usually the two kind of big uh, ticket events, uh, rides if you like, that people want to go on. They're both um, confirmed to be open during the Halloween party and you're not going to need a virtual queue to ride them. They're going to be operating standby lines only. So if you want to ride Tiana's Bio Adventure and or Tron Light Cycle Run at the Halloween party, you definitely can do and all you have to do is just turn up and stand in line and then you can ride them. So it's great. It can be a great way to get some rides done that are typically very difficult to get on. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and things like that comes to mind, has long waits during the day. Ordinarily, the wait times are gonna be down lower during the party. That being said, you're paying a lot of money to be there. I'd try and yeah, I always do rides when I'm there, one or two. I used to love it when they did um, Pirates of the Caribbean because they used to have live actors in there. Don't do that anymore, which I'm a bit sad about. But um, I would try and do the special Halloween overlay rides uh, if you're going to do anything because, of course, they're special and uh, see the shows and things because ultimately that is what you're paying for. But, um, you know, it's just worth bearing in mind, especially things like Tiana, which is just open, very popular. Tron, which is very popular and you need a, a virtual queue for under normal circumstances, you can just turn up and ride those rides at the Halloween party. If you do want to know exactly what rides are open during the Halloween party, of course, you can check the My Disney Experience app because certain things aren't open. So, for example, just off the top of my head, Carousel of Progress, that doesn't open. And last but not least, let's not forget that during the Halloween party, there will be a ton of snacks available, both Halloween themed and less so, um, that you can pick up from around the park. Just be aware that a lot of the normal restaurants are not open during the parties. So it is kind of more like 
treats and snacks that you're going to pick up from around the park if you want to get them but there's certainly a lot available and they're a lot of they're, they're always a lot of fun uh, also of course you can't forget the halloween merch that you usually find dotted around the place there's usually some kind of collectible popcorn bucket that usually has a long line and sells out and uh, the usual stuff you can usually get like mugs spirit jerseys and what have you so keep your eyes peeled if you want to get some of that sweet halloween merch so that's it thanks so much for watching this video let me know in the comments down below if you're planning to attend the halloween party this year i've been andrew and we'll see you in the next video